Welcome to another in the series of demonstrations designed to get you quickly up to speed with what's new in NXCAM. This video will demonstrate how you can now explicitly locate and orient the in-process workpiece when transferring it from one mounting position to another to machine multiple parts. Previously, NX could only position the IPW automatically by referencing the same part. The transferred IPW no longer requires you to specify a part, allowing you to either machine the IPW independent of the part geometry, or to specify part geometry that is different from the previous one, as in staged models. We'll begin by examining the assembly and the IPW for workpiece 1. The assembly contains two different parts mounted on a block. The first part is mounted to face 1 and face 2. The mounting on face 1 machines the top of the part. The mounting on face 2 machines the bottom of the same part. The second part is mounted to face 3. This part is similar to the first, but requires some additional machining. Staging the model in this way allows this part to use the same IPW as the previously machined part. Each workpiece in the setup requires an MCS with the same relative position and orientation to the mounting face. To see the position and orientation of each MCS, Click MCS1, MCS2, and MCS3. Double click Workpiece 1 to edit the object. Click Specify Blank. The IPW position section of the dialog box is new. Notice that the positioning type is set to CSIS. This is a new option that allows you to explicitly position the IPW when it is transferred from one workpiece group to another. Click Specify CSIS. The CSIS for the IPW is positioned at the corner on the back side of the part. Now we'll create a workpiece group for the part mounted on face 2 and position the IPW using the same orientation relative to the part as the CSIS in workpiece 1. Click Create Geometry. Select Mill Planer from the type list. Click Workpiece. Select MCS2 from the Geometry list. Type Workpiece2 in the name box. Click OK. We'll now specify the IPW source and position for Workpiece2. Click Specify Blank. Select IPW In Process Workpiece from the type list. Click Select Source for IPW. Click Workpiece 1 as the source. Click OK. There are now two positioning types, CSIS and PART. The CSIS option is new. It allows you to explicitly position the IPW when it is transferred from one workpiece group to another. It maintains associativity between the IPW positions and does not require you to define part geometry. This option may be used when the part geometry in the target IPW is different from the part geometry in the source IPW. The part option retains the behavior from previous releases. NX automatically positions the IPW when transferring from one workpiece to another and maintains associativity between the IPW positions. This option is simple to use because of the automatic IPW positioning, but it can only be used when the part geometry in the target IPW is the same as the part geometry in the source IPW. Notice that the positioning type is set to CSIS. This occurs because the specified IPW source, Workpiece 1, uses CSIS as the positioning type. The positioning type for the target workpiece must be the same as that of the source. If it is not, you will receive an alert when you click Update Local IPW from Source. Move the CSIS to the corresponding corner of the part mounted on Face 2, and rotate the CSIS so that it has the same orientation relative to the part as the CSIS in Workpiece 1. Click Update Local IPW from Source. The IPW should correspond to the position and orientation of the part. 
click OK in the blank geometry dialog box. Click OK in the workpiece dialog box. Now we'll machine the bottom of the part using the IPW from workpiece 1. Copy the cavity mill operation and paste it into workpiece 2. Rename the operation cavity mill 2. Double click cavity mill 2 to edit the operation. Click specify part. Select the part mounted on face 2. Click OK. Select the 30 millimeter mill tool from the tool list. Click generate. Click OK to complete the operation. Next, we'll create a workpiece group for the part mounted on face 3 and position the IPW using the same orientation relative to the part as the CSIS in workpiece 2. This is a different part containing an additional face that requires machining. Click Create Geometry. Select MC3 from the geometry list. Type Workpiece 3 in the name box. Click OK. We'll now specify the IPW source and position for Workpiece 3. Click Specify Blank. Select IPW in Process Workpiece from the type list. Click Select Source for IPW. Click Workpiece 2 as the IPW source. Click OK in the IPW source dialog box. Move the CSIS to the corresponding corner of the part mounted on face 3 of the block and rotate the CSIS so that it has the same orientation relative to the part as the CSIS in Workpiece 1 and 2. Click Update Local IPW from Source. The IPW should correspond to the position and orientation of the part. Click OK in the blank geometry dialog box. Click OK in the workpiece dialog box. Now we'll machine the part using the IPW from workpiece 2. Copy the cavity 2 mill operation and paste it inside of workpiece 3. Rename the operation Cavity Mill 3. Double click Cavity Mill 3 to edit the operation. Click Specify Part. Select the part geometry mounted on Face 3. Click OK. Click Generate. Click OK in the Operation dialog box. This concludes the demonstration of how you can explicitly locate and orient the in-process workpiece when transferring it from one mounting position to another when machining multiple parts. Thank you.